one of my first dreams was to, to get a college education, get a college degree. Um, of course, life happened, and I put other people, others' needs above mine. And then I got to a place when I was 65, um, it was almost like an epiphany, you know. No one else is here now. There are no children, there are no men, um, and this was about me. And I, I wanted to finish something that I had started. When I decided I was gonna come back, my first thing was I wanted to finish my, my major, which was sociology and women's studies minor. One of my church members, she graduated from Meredith, and she suggested that I look into it. And I came over, I talked to the wings advisor, and from then on, it was just like the doors just start opening. So I have to believe it was fate. Working with Martell has been delightful. It still is. I will miss her when she's gone. Just, just ran across a, a document from when she was admitted, and I had noted in, I had interviewed her um, as part of the application process. And one of the things she said was that she had fears about coming back to college. But another thing she said was, but I knew it was the right place to be when she got here, came onto campus. So seeing her go from that to someone who's getting ready to graduate with high honors and um, has accomplished so much, it's, it's truly amazing. Technology, it has been a beast. Um, for a lot of reasons, you know. Um, I know it's necessary, but I don't necessarily enjoy it. Um, I still think the telephone is for talking. But one of the things I've learned is that I can learn. I'm still able to learn. I mean, I, I love learning. But there was always that doubt that maybe because of my age it would not click like it used to be because I was an A student you know in 69 but once I started taking the classes I was just amazed at how it was almost like a light came on. Yes, when she's in the class she raises the bar for all of us. I feel like she keeps me on my toes the other students will be more talkative because she's engaged in class discussion. And having a presence like that, someone who is serious about her education, willing to be an engaged, interactive student during class, to interact with her professors in a way that is a model to other students. Like, this is what we're here for. We're here to learn. We're here to engage with our professors. I love when she's in our classes because then she sets the tone for the rest of the class. Um, it's always such a joy to go to class and know that she's there. She keeps me coming. I've contemplated skipping a few times and I knew Martel was going to be there, so I went. <laughs> she, even though she is a non-traditional student, she is a lot older than many of us, she, a lot of times you forget about it just because of the fact of how she's willing to come up, have these conversations with you, talk to you about just about anything and will help you. Sociology and in criminology, Really, the age never mattered. It was the issues. Listening to young women in the 21st century was not that different from when I was in high school in the 60s. She was in my office one day and she told me the story about how her granddaughter gave her this bracelet. And it was a really inspiring story. Well, my granddaughter, 16-year-old granddaughter, um, she called me one Sunday, it was Mother's Day, in fact, and she says, um, Nana, I got something for you. So in the church, she comes in, she opens it up, she gives it to me, and I look at it, and it says, Gold Digger. And Kanye West came to my mind. I ain't saying she's Gold Digger. And I looked at her, I said, what is this supposed to mean? She said, Nana, read it. 
And it actually says gold digger. And then she looked at me, she says, because I want you to keep going for your goals. I had, I just start crying. She had plenty of times that she could have said, I don't need to do this. I don't want to do this anymore. This is too much. And she may think she's not going to make it and she's not going to get something done right or she's not going to make the grade she wants or thinks that she needs. Um, and she does. She sticks with it instead of saying, well, I'm just going to withdraw. Maybe I can take that another semester. I used to joke around, I was like, I don't know if we're going to graduate. And she was like, we're going to graduate. There's no doubt about it. She's like, we're just going to pass this class and we're going to make it a day and we're going to graduate on time. I've watched her become part of this community, which that other students know who you are, love to see you, want to be your friend, uh, whether they are 19 or, or 25 or whatever. Um, so she's truly made herself a part of Meredith. She has such a like an energetic personality that she's willing to like bring happiness and joy into anyone's life, especially on campus. When I would, when Martel and I would pass each other in the hallway, and she would see see that I was feeling anxious, she would stop me, and because we knew some of each other's stories, she would say, "Remember that we're miracles." She's like my cool grandma. She's. <laughs> I don't think she likes people to call her grandma, but she's the cool grandma. She just really genuinely cares about me and everybody here, and so that just means the world to me. And my Meredith experience would be completely different, and I would not have enjoyed my time as much here if it hadn't been for Martel. And she's pretty doggone smart. She's actually being inducted into Alpha Sigma Lambda on, on uh, CSA Day, and that is a very high achievement. Um, it's a, it represents a very small number of the WING students and it's a National Honor Society just for adult students. She's actually winning our highest academic award, which is our um, Academic Excellence Award. The ladies that I have, um, I've had the privilege of being in, in class, with, not just in class, but I've met. They have been inspiring. You know, they've uh, invited me in their conversations, you know, not just in, in the classroom, but in the lounge, in the uh, cafeteria. They've offered, offered to help me, you know. I didn't have to ask. They knew that I needed help and they were willing to help. I, I, I appreciate that, you know, because they didn't have to. And then on top of that, they would ask my advice. Well, they'd ask my counsel, let's put it that way. And they would listen when I shared, you know. Um, that is something I would take with me from Meredith that I would, I would not have gotten anywhere else. I truly believe that. That yeah. is probably the only thing that, um, that I'm gonna miss, you know. I'm not gonna miss the technology. I'm going to miss the professors. And I'm going to always treasure this. So what happened to the wheels? Well, I want to believe that I was walking for my education. And I just walked and rolled until, hey. All I know is that I looked up there one day and I didn't have any wheels. <laughs> on one side, I don't know why it's on one side. I had one of them days that I was so tired, but this bag has seen me through with these books and that computer. 
that I could not carry. When I realized that I had rolled the wheels off of it. I don't know, it's just a statement of just how far I've gone. <laughs> Saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke.